How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, the show where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, in episode number 227 of our podcast, we are going to be discussing everything, the debacle that has happened with the Chicago Bears throughout the last 24 hours. Our topics will range from Mitchell, Mitchell Trubisky signing with the Buffalo Bills to the Bears making a strong push at signing Kenny Galladay. We've got a ton to break down today, so let's hop right into it. Before we get into the show, though, I would like to say if you guys want Bears content every day of the week, we are officially getting back into the swing of things as things get kick into gear. A lot going on, uh, as you'll see in this video, uh, a ton of news to discuss, and we're going to be posting videos each and every day. So if you want Chicago Bears content every day of the week, no matter how good or bad the team ends up being, we're going to be keeping you guys in the loop. So do us a favor, like and subscribe, follow whatever platform you are listening on. Your support definitely keeps us going. I am your host, Chris Malpe, today to break down Everything that is going on that has had my head spinning for about the past 24 hours, I am joined today by my co-host, Parth Shaw. Parth, how is it going, buddy? What's going on? And you are muted, my I'm friend. muted, yep. Yeah. Um, doing pretty <laughs> good. Uh, just, you know, watching some March Madness, the first game started. We're in Tech versus Florida. So excited about that. Yeah, uh, March Madness kicking off. Uh, in our home state as of right now, Indiana. Uh, I know you and I are both going to some games, so that'll be yeah. exciting. Uh, but we've surely got some March Madness with the Bears. Uh, but before we get into this one, here is a quick message from today's sponsors over at Manscaped. Support for the Bear Down podcast is brought to you guys today by Manscaped. They are the best products to keep your family jewels safe. So guys, Manscaped hooked me up with a couple of products from their Perfect Package 3.0. First off, their lawnmower precision trimming for your family jewels. They will also hook you up with a dop kit with a ton of stuff to keep you guys fresh and clean. Their crop preserver as well as their crop provider are two great products that come with their Perfect Package 3.0, and they have a variety of stuff for men's grooming to keep you guys in the loop and keep your woman happy. So be sure to go use our code BD20 for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Once again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BD20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job at manscaped.com. All right, guys, once again, code BD20 for free shipping and 20% off at manscaped.com. Be sure to go down, click the link in our bio uh, to find out more. Let's hop into it. We have a ton to discuss today, Parth. Probably uh, going to be one of our more action-packed episodes of all time. Yeah. But let's just start chronologically. Uh, we're going to kick it off with this. Um, and we could record individual videos on all of these topics, but there's just so much that we decided to clump it all into one. So let's start with this. Mitchell Trubisky signing with the Buffalo Bills on a one-year deal worth $10 million. Parth, you started off your entire career covering the Bears as Trubisky Nation. Uh, we finally see his time in Chicago come to an end. Uh, the Bills' GM, Brandon Bean, said he doesn't expect Trubisky will be there long. Uh, he thinks he's going to get some good uh, some good time under his sleeve there behind Josh Allen, and then he'll hit the market again in 2022. So what were your thoughts and initial reactions to Trubisky finally being gone? Uh, it, it feels weird uh, not having him on the team now, but I think it was a move that the Bears had to make. I'm happy for him. I think Buffalo is a good spot where he can just sit behind Josh Allen, someone who's a pretty similar quarterback. You know, Josh, I mean, obviously Josh Allen is 10 times better than Mitchell Trubisky, but Trubisky has the tools that – Josh Allen had when he came into the league the same same physical tools. Um, they both are pretty mobile. Both can throw the deep ball. Um, I think you know Josh Allen was a little bit more inaccurate coming into the league, but now he's a lot more accurate. And Trubisky is kind of the opposite. He was very accurate in college ball, and now he's inaccurate. So if working with Josh Allen and that crew in Buffalo, uh, hopefully it helps him out. I would love to see him succeed at the end of the day. Um, and um, for the Bears, uh, it was a move that we had to make. I obviously wish we got a better quarterback than Andy Dalton to, you know, fix that move. But 
uh, you can't do anything about that, but happy for Trubisky. Um, you know, thanks for everything you've done for he us. And, uh, you know, I really started off, you know, with him, basically the Trubisky nation, you know, I used that handle for basically two, two and a half years. Um, that's where I took off. Um, that's where I joined Baird down. So, you know, a lot, a lot depended on him for my su su success, I guess as well. So, you know, props to him for everything he's done for us. Yeah, uh, it, you know, it's tough to see Mitch go, uh, and I'll still be rooting for him. I'm someone on this podcast who definitely has gone against him in numerous situations throughout the last year or two. Uh, middle of 2019 is probably when I gave up hope, but, you know, kudos to Mitch. Uh, as much as I wish I saw him progress, he was thrown under the bus a lot uh, by the media, by Chicago, by Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, but, man, uh, he always came in, he worked his butt off, he said and did the right things. Uh, so I hope he can get his career back on path in Buffalo or uh, back on the right path uh, in Buffalo, you know. Um, and we're not going to talk about it in today's video. I know you talked about being a little sad about about ending up with Andy Dalton Parth, but Adam Schefter did say this morning the Bears aren't abandoning hope on Russell Wilson, even though it seems like that's uh, definitely on the outskirts at this point. That's going to be an interesting situation. Uh, as we move towards the draft. So I would say, generally speaking, I don't think this Bears QB search is over. Keep an eye on it uh, as we continue to head towards the draft. Let's head into our next topic. The Bears are moving on from Kyle Fuller. This is an interesting one. Uh, this move will save the Bears $11-plus million in cap space. While it was originally reported that the Bears were releasing him, they are, in fact, still looking for trade partners, just trying to get absolutely anything uh, for Fuller if they can absolutely do that. While this is going to be tough and the Bears are going to be in the market for a cornerback if they don't want to start 2021 with literally a new slate at cornerback one, two, and three with Jalen Johnson, Duke Shelley, and Kendall Vildor. Uh, th this was a move we saw coming uh, along with Akeem Hicks, who we'll discuss a little bit further down the road. Seems like a couple of teams are interested primarily right now. Uh, the Denver Broncos as well as the Los Angeles Chargers, who just cut Casey Hayward. So Parth, uh, another one. Uh, a bear that we have seen and grown up with uh, and and saw revive his career in Chicago is about to be gone. So uh, what are your thoughts on Fuller leaving, and what do you expect the Bears to do moving forward at the cornerback position? It sucks to see Fuller go. Um, you know, he really blossomed here in Chicago, especially the last two years. He got a lot better as a player. Um, and I, I loved watching him play. I thought he was one of those corners who would always get the job done, you know, whatever, whatever the situation was. A great tackler at times, too. Uh, those plays in the red zone he made were amazing. It's going to be tough to replace someone like him. Um, you probably can't right away. The Bears are probably going to have to draft a corner early this year. Same with an offensive lineman, uh, maybe even a quarterback. There's a lot of needs on this team. Uh, cornerback definitely just became one, especially when you lose your all-pro, Pro Bowl type of cornerback. Um, Jalen Johnson's got a tough task ahead of him. Uh, I, I think he's up to it. Uh, it's just he needs to stay healthy. You know, Jalen Johnson's got those health issues all the time. And that's not his fault. You know, injuries happen in the game. But if he can somehow limit that, um, it would be helpful for the Bears just as because we would we need him desperately because I don't really trust Kendall Vildor and Duke Shelley to become our cornerback two and three just yet. Yeah, uh, and this is, once again, another tough blow to this defense, but shows you that Ryan Pace's overspending is really catching up to him. Yeah. Uh, and I said it earlier, we'll talk a little bit about Akeem Hicks moving forward, but it seems like his time in Chicago is also coming to an end. Uh, and we discussed these moves all offseason. I mean, we probably saw them coming, uh, but them actually happening, it, it hits a little bit harder when, when, when this type of stuff actually happens. Um, Kyle Fuller is someone who I got to meet personally, was a great guy. Um, actually got to see him play some golf. Man, that guy can hit a drive uh, to the moon. Um, Wouldn't be but, surprised. But, uh, you know, it's tough to see him go. We, we really saw him revive his career in Chicago. But on the other hand, I, I actually am confident in, in the rest of the Bears' of secondary moving forward. Mm -hmm. We saw guys like Duke Shelley, Kendall Vildor fill in and, and make some pretty good plays and, more importantly, not give up many big plays uh, near the end of the season when Johnson and Screen went down. So uh, we'll see what happens in the future. I think the Bears moving forward are going to have to rely on a lot of veterans to uh, sign some cheap deals as we've seen in the past with some veterans minimum deals with guys like Artie Burns and to Sean Gibson. Uh, it seems like the bears are going to have to go that route yet again, this off season, they are clearing up some, some pretty sizable uh, cap space though. 
uh, which is important as well. Cap space definitely isn't a myth uh, as much as people say and believe that it does. Uh, it's avoidable in some cases, but in the Bears' situation, they were committing $165 million to their defense. That's going to eventually catch up to them. Uh, and I promise we will get on to some better uh, news down the road. Uh, okay. There is some interesting offensive news that we've got to break down uh, moving forward. But let's talk about another Bear defender uh, who seems like his time in Chicago is coming to an end. Brad Biggs reported yesterday that the Bears are allowing Akeem Hicks to seek a trade. He's been very cryptic on social media ever since that news came out, taking away all of his Bears stuff, uh, changed profile pictures and stuff like that. So it seems like his time with the Bears is coming to an end. But Parth, we did find out news this morning that Eddie Goldman is coming back. Um, we saw Bilal Nichols play well in 2020, so I'm excited for him to have another opportunity to start uh, in the upcoming year. But once again, uh, seeing the real heart and soul of this Bears defense, probably moving on. Uh, it seems like the Bears were having some troubles, uh, similar to Fuller finding a trade partner just because of the large contract and them getting up there in age. Uh, he might get released later this week. But once again, another move that's going to clear up a ton of cap space for the Bears. But, man, this is another tough, tough blow. Uh, what, do, what are your thoughts on the Bears probably moving on from a keen pick sometime here before the draft? It hurts to see. Um, you know, Keem Hicks is, like you said, is the heart and soul of this defense. Um, he's the live bear. He is the bear. He represents this team exactly what we want it to be. Um, it definitely hurts to see him go. But at the end of the day, this move I saw coming before even the season started. I thought I knew the Bears would be in a cap base hole. And I knew if Keem Hicks was getting up there in age and his production went down, he would be one that would get cut. Um, it, it definitely hurts to see him go. Uh, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, he's a great guy, a great person, great player, great teammate, everything you want in a player. But at the end of the day, this is the move the Bears have to make financially, and those decisions are decisions you just cannot ignore and uh, criticize, basically. Yeah, uh, you know it, it's really and, I've, and, and I've, I've I've become one to I've become one to criticize Akeem Hicks lately as well too. You know the last couple. Uh, at the end of the season, you know, he was getting a little sloppy. Um, his his play wasn't the best. So for what we were paying him, um, no, uh, as much as I hate to say, I do not mind him walking away from the Bears. Yeah, uh, and I'm excited to have Eddie Goldman back. Bilal yeah. Nichols has a ton of potential, I think, at exactly. that nose tackle position. So that'll be excited to see. People have said Eddie Goldman throughout the offseason. Uh, in the entirety of last season was working out, getting stronger, and he's looking to return as a better player. We did see a little bit of a regression from Akeem Hicks, but it's still going to be tough to see him go. Yeah. I remember when we were in Green Bay last year, the Bears, uh, they were designing run plays to head towards the outside, uh, head, head, head towards the numbers. So Akeem Hicks was avoided in the middle. Matt LaFleur respected him, uh, and he's been a great Bear for a, year, uh, a long, long time. Uh, yeah. Park really epitomized it, a great teammate, a great player. Uh, great to the fans. Overall, someone you just love to see. Uh, and it's surely going to be tough to see him go because I'm sure he'll get cut later this week. It feels weird talking about all these topics for so short because normally if this happened across a span of days, we would make individual videos on all of them. Uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about moving forward. Um, and Akeem Hicks going, it's definitely going to be uh, a rough one. But uh, I do think the Bears are still settled that nose tackle with uh, yeah. Goldman and Nichols. So that should be interesting. Now on to some good news from last night. Uh, in this flurry of everything, you know, we made a video earlier this week about Allen Robinson not being willing to sign the franchise tag, but he actually signed it. Uh, yeah. Inside sources said that he realized how poor the wide receiver market was right now. He realized he'll have a better shot of getting paid in 2022, uh, whether that be the, by the Bears or another team. I'm pretty sure he probably won't be a candidate uh, for a tag and trade because uh, we have some news that we'll discuss right after this that would uh, lead you to believe that he will be staying in Chicago. But my favorite bear um, staying in Chicago for 2021, uh, it seems like the Bears are trying to focus on the offense more so right now, getting Andy Dalton or whoever's going to be the next quarterback uh, some good weapons so that they can thrive offensively. Uh, the Bears' defense is definitely taking a hit, but once again, overpaying the defense is going to bite you in the butt at some point. But Parth, I, I, I think this came as a shock to us because when everything seemed to be treading downhill, uh, Allen Robinson was probably the situation leading the way in terms of bad things happening to the Bears. But it turns out he switches his decision, and he's going to be hopefully uh, a Bear for 2021. So what were your thoughts on him 
uh, switching his mind and, and taking that $17.9 million in 2021? Um, I would say I was surprised, but I'm not shocked to say the least. You know, like you said, the wide receiver market isn't the best right now. Um, a lot of teams. Wide receivers help. are down bad right now. I mean, yeah, we'll talk down. a little bit about Kenny Galladay later. Also, there are some teams in on Juju Smith Schuster. Exactly. Little um, but like, in the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, the I mean, the Bears did have a meeting with uh, Kenny Galladay. I think on Wednesday. So I wouldn't if that if the Bears could somehow bring in Kenny Galladay, that would be sick. Too. Well, it originally seemed like the Bears meeting with Galladay might have been a little bit of bait for Robinson to come back, but we'll get into it later. It seems like they're trying to pair them up. I don't know how likely that is. You, uh, do you think that could be likely? Yeah, we'll have to make a video about that. We could make <laughs> we did from everything that happened yesterday. We could probably make two weeks worth two, of video. Oh yeah, obviously. But like, but, I mean, I would love to see Kenny Kenny Galladay and Allen Robinson together. But you know, just having Robinson back definitely. Is it assures us we have a receiver one, and just having him and Mooney at least next year will be a great thing. Um, and if the Bears can somehow bring in Kennedy Galladay and keep all three, that'd be insane. Um, I don't, I would not be, I don't think that could happen. But I, w- I would like if the Bears would do some like sign Kenny Galladay and tr- trade Allen Robinson. I think that could help the team out a lot more actually. Yeah, that would be an interesting one if Robinson still wants out. Uh, you yeah. know, maybe get Orlando Brown straight up for him with the wide receiver market how it's looking right now. I'm not entirely sure the bears could get a first round pick for Robinson anymore. Uh, maybe a second or a third rounder. Uh, they, they could snag for Robinson. I would hope it would be a second. It would um, be a second and a third maybe. Yeah. Or a but, second and fourth. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting. At least as par said, this guarantees that the bears will have a wide receiver uh, in 2021, a wide receiver one. Uh, the Kenny Galladay situation is very interesting. We're going to talk about that. Um, a little bit further down the road, but you know, I'm excited to have Robinson back. There's so many moving parts. We still don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Uh, everyone's like, oh, they told Andy Dalton he was a starter. They told Andy Dalton he was a starter. Yes, but the Bears are still in on Russell Wilson. I don't think that happens. Um, because of the package they offered the first time was was irresistible. And Pete Carroll said, no, maybe if you get the New York Jets involved or can somehow trade up in the NFL draft uh, to get a higher pick to give to Seattle because I think they'll need um, a surefire quarterback one, uh, someone to take over for us if they are, uh, in fact, moving on uh, from him. I still don't think it happens. Uh, but there's so many moving parts with the Bears. At least they're going to have their wide receiver one uh, in check. So uh, that 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 is definitely interesting. But let's talk about arguably the best news over the last two days, uh, which is the Bears are pushing hard to bring in Kenny Galladay. Uh, it seems like there's about four teams in on him right now. I don't essentially like the Bears' as odds, but right now we've got the Bears, the Giants, the Ravens, and the Bengals. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that because that's probably where most of the news uh, has really came from recently. The Bears' is pitch to Kenny Galladay, who obviously went to St. Rita High School, is from Chicago, was the opportunity to play alongside Allen Robinson. Brad Biggs of the Chicago Tribune reported that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy apparently pitched that Galladay and Robinson, not even to mention Darnell Mooney, would give them one of the best wide receiver duos, if not the best, in the National Football League. Uh, They also said that both receivers would be able to have good seasons with enough balls going around to both of them and would be rewarded in the near future with money, whether or not that be from the bears. I would hope if they sign both that they would be able to keep at least one of them around uh, past 2021. But we see the bears trying to create a very good wide receiving core. uh, As I said earlier, Parth trying to shift some of that focus off the defense and onto the offensive side of the ball. It doesn't make sense to me why they haven't addressed the offensive line yet. Uh, But right now it seems like they're trying to address the quarterback and the wide receiver position. So what do you think about this news of the Bears trying to bring in Galladay? It was reported that they're offering him about eleven to twelve million dollars a year, which is wild to me. <sighs> yeah, we think about back months ago, the Bears were offering Allen Robinson sixteen million dollars a year. Uh, wide receivers can't even get that now. Um, and Detroit offered Kenny Galladay eighteen million dollars a year, uh, and now he's considering coming to Chicago or going to some other places for what you would assume to be uh, a cheaper price tag. So, uh, what do you think about this Galladay news and? Do you think he would accept a pay cut uh, to come back home and play for his hometown team? That would be nice. Uh, it'd be a little one-year contract, I bet. Um, I would I would be excited. It seems but, like teams don't want to take two- and three-year chances on him just because like, of his injury history. Yeah. But him coming that, home to Chicago would be super cool. It would be mind. super cool, but like, do all these guys really want to play with Andy Dalton? Like, is that- That's what I'm saying, but also like, 
in the back of my mind, I remember hearing stuff about Russell Wilson waiting to see. And I, I'm way too optimistic because yeah, I don't think Russell but Wilson. Do you remember, do you remember when I'm, I'm thinking maybe a rookie quarterback. Maybe they're excited yeah. to play with a rookie. But do you remember? Do you remember when the stuff was coming out about Russell Wilson waiting and seeing what the Bears were going to do this offseason to try and make a push for the Super Bowl? Yeah, maybe yeah. this is what they're doing in order to try and force him to demand a trade or trying to entice Deshaun Watson to Chicago or That's trying to logic, trade up for a rookie to, to bring him in and, and, and put him in a good position. So it's interesting. No, I, I know. I know what you mean, but some hopeful logic. Um, you know, I, 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 I just I'm always like, an optimist. I exactly. always prepare myself to get let down. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm not going to prepare myself to like get let down like that. Over there. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you would assume even with Dalton, if you can get mm -hmm. Galladay and Robinson and Mooney in, I mean, as much as you wish it wasn't Andy Dalton, I don't, I don't think that would be the worst situation in the world. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, Andy Dalton was a good passer back in the day. Uh, he still can put over four thousand yards. I feel like, especially with all those guys, this offense would be air raid. Um, you know, there was familiarity with Bill Lazor. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Um, but at the end of the day. I just feel like if we had someone like Russell Wilson or like Andy uh, over Andy Dalton, it would be a lot better with all three of these stud wide receivers if we could bring them in. Yeah, and luckily the Bears have Robinson and Mooney locked up. Um, that's the most positive sign. Yeah. I, if they got Galladay. I, I I would call it gravy um, at some point. Yeah. But at least for right now, we're back with the receiving corpse that we had. Anthony Miller is also another interesting one. We can make so many videos on other things. Uh, stuff like Russell Wilson uh, still being on the Bears' radar. Stuff like the Bears not reaching out to Cordell Patterson for some time. Stuff like Anthony Miller possibly getting traded. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff uh, to discuss in the future, and we're going to be bringing you guys it on this channel. Uh, so be sure, whether you're listening on a podcasting platform or on YouTube, to give us a follow, subscribe, drop a like. If you're listening on YouTube, comment down uh, in the comments whether or not you guys want the Bears to bring in Kenny Galladay uh, and try and turn their offense around. It should be interesting to see what happens over the next 24 hours or so, but we will keep you guys covered here. So please be sure to keep an eye out on our channel because regardless of how good or bad things go, uh, we will definitely be keeping you guys posted on everything Bears every day of the week. If you want more content from us, be sure to head over to our website, beardown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs all off season, keeping you guys posted on everything that is going down in Chicago because, oh me, oh my, uh, our heads are definitely spinning right now, uh, awaiting for some news, and I'm sure we'll have some more clarity as we approach the NFL draft. Uh, and be sure to check out our website too for some draft coverage because in this free agency frenzy, uh, a lot of stuff regarding the draft has been kind of pushed aside, but that's still coming up. That's still important, so be sure to head over to our website if you want more content from us. Link is in our bio. If you would like to find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter, we do bi-monthly giveaways. We do sneak peeks of guests we're having on the show. Um, and it's also a great way to interact with us and tell us what you want to see on the channel. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bear Down. And finally, you can find the links to all of our social media down in the description, Parth, as well as my own Instagram and Twitter pages. Be sure to drop us a follow on both of those platforms. You can see our thoughts on the entirety of everything going on with the Bears, as well as the National Football League and all of Chicago sports. Parth Shaw, I, I mean, what a crazy 24 hours. What a crazy way to head into the weekend. Uh, more so negatives, I would say, but also some positives. Uh, coming along with the Chicago Bears, Ryan Pace stuff is brewing at Hallis Hall. Uh, it almost seems to me like it's it's franchise quarterback um, or rebuild at this point. Is someone yeah. put on Twitter last night, Russ or rebuild, uh, and same goes for trading up for a quarterback like uh, Justin Fields or a, or a Trey Lance. It seems like it's Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, or rebuild at this point. Um, unless Andy Dalton can do something, I, you know, as much as I don't want to, uh, keep him out of the picture, I still think a lot could go down at the quarterback's, uh, position, especially based on what we saw happen with Mike Glennon a couple of years ago. Everyone's so sure that Andy Dalton's going to be the starter, but we saw this exact same thing play out in 2017 when the bears put a ton of assets into their offense. And then Mike Glennon was at the draft party and saw them draft his replacement. So, uh, I, I don't think we can sit still just yet. Uh, and be content with what we have. But any last words before we close this one out, buddy? Yeah, we definitely cannot sit still. 
and be content. Um, especially the quarterback position, I feel like there's there need there still needs to be an upgrade. I'm not gonna stick with Andy Dalton as a starter for the rest of the year or the rest of the season. Um, I feel like we got to bring someone in at least, um, whether that's a rookie quarterback. I would love to see a trade up in the draft. I feel like that's the best bet for the Bears right now. I also feel like that's got to be the most realistic option. Yeah, it's got to be the most. Seattle, unless Seattle switches their thoughts on Russ, or if the Bears can put together a package where Seattle would surely have a QB to take over the reins in Seattle, someone like a Sam Darnold, if you get the Jets involved, uh, I think you would have to think that trading up is probably most realistic. Yeah, either that or, like you said, get Sam Darnold. Or, or bring I, – I don't know, understand why the Bears didn't bring Sam Darnold over Andy Dalton, actually. But, um, you know, there, there's that. Uh, I, 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 the draft is coming up. I think the Bears could easily make a splash move for a quarterback. If not, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears stayed mediocre. And I think Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy don't want to fully commit to a rebuild. Um, we saw that last season when they brought in Nick Foles as well. Um, they're fine with being winning seven to nine games, barely making the playoffs or missing out barely, and then trying to make a move the year after to somehow – and having like an okay season, exactly. So exactly. They, so it's not a complete rip down. So yeah. so, so I they're not going to rip it down, um, Bears fans. But I would I, I do see this season being like the eight and eight type of year again. Um, and maybe if the year after the Bears can bring in another quarterback and see where it goes. But the defensive talent is definitely expiring. So it's it's kind of it's it's kind of hard to see this team keep relying on their defense to win games. Which is going to be interesting to see with how these Galladay situations play yeah. out, how they continue to pursue a quarterback, because um, they're going to have to try and front load on the offense now. I exactly. don't think by any means that this defense will be bad. I think it'll be a step down from what it was, and it should be interesting to see what Sean Desai does as well. Parth, we could keep going on for hours and hours and hours, yeah. uh, but we will be bringing you guys videos every day of the week. There's so much to talk about now. Uh, so we will definitely be keeping you guys posted on everything Bears. It's been a pleasure to be your host, guys. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you guys in the next one.